and soft in, in there, yeah. hey. When you tap it, you can see if it's up. Um, like, like yep. No big one over there. This one over there. Yep. Start putting the veggies around. Because there's a big layer of coals, because that was a big layer of um, wood. Yep. Yep. Uh, the wood down was stacked up this side. So that's a lot of coals that go back into the hole. Yep. Okay. So in between all that wood is stones. And also with stones on top of the meat, when you put the bark in there, it actually allows the heat to move around underneath the bark. Yep. Okay, that's why I like putting stones on top. And it just creates little gaps to put a heat over the meat. Yep. Yeah, we can always get the green ants and stuff. Do you want to try it? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Called what, sorry? Unknown Bell. Unknown Bell. Yeah, the words. We just call it Vicks on a stick. Vicks on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> we use it for like if we have a cold, crush it up, yep. smell it. Yep. Uh, is, that, is that a good size? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's usually, like with us, we usually like mm -hmm. eating the um, smaller ones. Yeah, okay. But, um, like we always yep. eat Barra, but. Saratoga, black brim. Yeah, yeah. We kindly go for them when we go fishing. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, it's going to be really hot here now. I can feel it. This one here is one big sheet. Wow. Oh, look at that. Are you hungry? Oh, <laughs> 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 that be Wow. Nice. Mining company, they just come and go. They can come and make money on your country. And then they leave you with nothing, you know? Or they leave you with unfinished work. And especially when you're dealing with uh, uranium, it's very poison, very toxic, you know? It's not good for Greek, for Billabong, for Boot, you know? We hunt here, we, we hunt, we fish, you know? We go live off the country, we drink nice water, and, you know, the plant and the animal. up and there's a bit of ancient um, rock art just behind this tarp so I think Jeffrey Lee was a little bit concerned about any dust on this so we're just trying to protect the box. So we'll just wait for the dust to settle. The mining company itself offered me a, you know offered me a really big deal. You know, probably on five to seven not million, I'm talking about billion, and a billion dollars, not million, and billion, and that's, I'm not worried about money. I mean, to, to be really honest, I worry about the land, and I worry about my generation, because I want to pass away, the next generation will be looking after this area, you know? 
and we don't want to mind this country, you know, um, family been out here all the time and this place haven't been touched, you know, and this is the way we family like it and the park too because family and park, they work together. Kakadu Kitchen is pretty much, you know, something like this, sitting out bush, like what you guys do further. And, um, you know, so that you don't want to be enclosed by walls, you know, all the time you want to be out moving with the seasons, moving through the land and gathering the bush tucker that's available that season, you know. You know, just putting up a table here, just something that you can cook with, maybe a couple of menu recipes to work with. Baby barramundi. Um, Annie Mandy has got some turtle. We got we got a cooked turtle today. It's still live, the turtle. So I just couldn't look at him until well, we're dead. And <laughs> cool. So we just got. I'm gonna cook um, the barramundi in some paper bars. Nice. Load it up with lots of um, like lemon myrtle, native thyme, some chili from the garden. Food is a great way of connecting people to country and people to each other and to, you know, because every food has a culture behind it, you know, it has a story, it's, you know, whether it's in mythology in Europe or mythology in Aboriginal Australia, you know, it's sort of reconnecting through those stories, you know, sharing stories with each other. Such a nice little looking fruit. Like tapioca or sago or something. That's great. Like for instance here in Kakadu, we've had you know the Kakadu plum. And um, is it the United States, Mary Kay Cosmetics? They took a couple of seeds and started a plantation in South America. They were pretty much told to stop, you know, because it is, you know, there's a story not just in Kakadu, but, you know, there's a story connected from people from Queensland, you know, all of the different places where it grows all the way through to the Kimberleys, every area and different Indigenous people have a different connection to the same fruit, which gives you that diversity and each one is just as important to protect. have that conversation and even the language around indigenous food. I think people are afraid to say indigenous food. They call it native food or uh, wild food. Um, and I think the term wild, um, it's pretty much a term of the unknown, you know, they don't know because they don't know what the culture or the story is around that. So they just see, you know, they look across there, they don't, they don't know, it's just, it's, it is wild, you know. Um, but once, hopefully, you know, you can sort of, an unwilding experience in a sense, you want to unwild, you know, and so people know, you know, know something more. Yeah. And then we've got some mussels over this side, we call ganobir or guruk in our language. And I've got a very good form of iron that a lot of our people get. Oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes you we've got to do it right because, you know, we learn from the best. So we've got to try and do it as, you know, professionals. But 
I do it all the time, but it's just the big ones that it's I think the main worry would be just how do you maintain the cultural integrity of indigenous foods? You yeah. know, like make sure that the stories are kept, the um, cultural yeah. rights, you know, to certain, you know, yeah. people's totems, you know, like might be a bee, might be a, a crocodile. You know, how do you work that out? You know, with the global modern, you know, market. So I think that's a, a really big concern, you know. How do you approach that? And are people doing it? Like, so, you know, it really hurts your soul that our people are still missing out. Like it's, going, it's already gone down the same path as what Aboriginal art did in the early 70s. Being exploited. I think that it's not that we don't want to share, all of our people will share. People go out to communities all the time and we're more than willing to share. But because we live on that respect, that they think that they're going to get that respect all the time. And they don't. They don't get respected. Share, you know. Okay, who's keen to taste some? Yeah. Ah, this is the really nice part, so mm. but this is one of our favourite. That is I mean, good. You only need a little cure for hangover. <laughs> <laughs> When you're out there foraging like we have been, you know, the last few days, it's a perfect example, I think, of, because, you know, you're out there doing it, you know, you're feeling the plants, you're smelling the air, you know, you're sort of sweating it out and sharing an experience, you know. That's, there's a connection there between everyone, you know, through that, those activities, with, you know, cultural activities with the land. So when that mining company offered me that uh, pretty huge money, and I just said, look, you know, I'm not changing my mind from the start. I know my, my, my grandfather and my father wanted this mine and all other clan groups wanted this mine to go ahead. But for me, for the last Jock clan, I'm going to say no. And it's really hard for me because I know what kind of government, you know, government can change any time and they can change rules. and. I just said, I don't want any mine here at Gungara because, you know, um, I come out here at Gungara all the time and we go to Lightning Dream and, and, you know, me and my family, we camp down the bottom here sometime, showing them, you know, bush taga, learning them how to find bush taga and how to live off the land, but they need to continue that.
think uh, we're extremely lucky to, to be in this um, magnificent place today. And a huge thank you to um, Jeff for welcoming us. Hearing those stories uh, gave me goosebumps and yeah, I think we'll all agree that this is you know, quite a special evening for everyone. being in a place like this and hearing a bit about the story and then getting to eat a fucking meal here yep. with friends and it's incredible. Yeah. You guys have got the best job in the world. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, extremely lucky. I mean, like I said, you know, I, I, love, I love this country, you know, and I um, respect the area and the country and the culture and, and my people. And, um, and for the young next generation, you know, where they're going to go from here when they all grow up. <laughs>